Hey guys, welcome to Founder's Talk and we hope you enjoyed the Monopoly board that we put together for you previously. Today we're going to go full on gaming style and do a live streaming session of our Monopoly session. Uh, we put the Monopoly board together based on our experiences with founders but of course this uh, series of legal documentation really differs from startup to startup. So we're going to start our journey by covering the pink section and for today's video, we'll be covering three documents. The first is the NDA, the second is the founder's agreement, and the third is the advisor agreement. Moving to the first document, which is the NDA, um, before we even start a company, when you're pitching your idea to potential investors or potential co-founder, do consider if you would like to have a basic NDA in place. This gives you a bit of comfort that whatever information that you share with them will not be circulated to potential competitors or used against you. Obviously, this differs from startup to startup. If you're in a less competitive space, this, doc this document is less important. And also, consider using um, software such as Docsend or Digify to help you ensure that any information that you share with people is secure. The second document we're going to cover is the Founders Agreement. This is something that we potentially would put as a, as a very high priority document simply because of the number of founder disputes that, you know, we see happening. Um, in our opinion, a founder's agreement is basically a short form shareholder's agreement, a hybrid between you know, a gentleman handshake and a full fledged shareholder's agreement. The main purpose of the founder's agreement is to cover things like what happens if a co founder leaves halfway, whether for good reasons or bad reasons, what happens if a co founder does not deliver on its promises, or you know, what happens if a co founder enters into a dispute between you know the co-founding team uh, what we see happening is that when co-founders fall out and there's no agreement there is no uh, contract to govern the way they deal with disputes and people just get into a stage whereby they're stuck at ideation stage they can't move forward yet they're putting so much effort they don't want to start a new company and it really gets pretty painful uh, next up, we have the advisor agreement. Um, as you launch your company, we see a trend that many startups have, which is they will start approaching, you know, key CT people or you know experts in the field and say, "Hey, would you guys be interested in joining us as an advisor of our company?" This is a great idea because you know you don't have to pay them the full salary that a company typically has to pay yet you get to tap on the brains of top talents. Uh, in exchange, uh, these advisors will either get cash or equity, which is what we see uh, being the most common trend. Uh, the third hybrid that we see is a mixture of cash and equity. Uh, we see this advisor role uh, being used in two forms. One is as a pure advisory role, the second form is a way of sort of like coaching people in and potentially getting them to join the company in the future as well. So the advisor agreement is something that you might want to get in place for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're getting giving shares to an advisor, you want to make sure that all proper mechanisms are put in place. Why? Because once you give shares to someone, it's very hard to get it back. Unless you have, you know, a clause that you can rely on or if they, you know, agree to sign a share transfer form. So number one reason why you want to have a, a, an advisor agreement is to have a mechanism to get your shares back if the advisor doesn't perform well, you know, enters into a conflicting situation or, you know, just, just, just didn't live up to your expectations. The second reason why you want advisor agreements, you want to make sure that all IP or all confidential information or all trade secrets that's shared with them will always belong to the company and they cannot use the confidential information against you. So that's the second key reason why you want to put an advisor agreement in place. The third key reason why you want to put an advisor agreement in place is really to set the expectations right. We have had a couple of startups coming to us with lots of people on the share cap table. We say, hey, you know, we see like Tom, Joe and Harry on the share cap table. What exactly are these people? They were like, oh yeah, these were advisors which we gave shares to, but they actually never really contributed to the company. So in those situations, you know, you, you want to set up clear expectations on how many hours are they supposed to contribute to your company? What kind of milestones are they supposed to achieve for your company? 
and then have a proper mechanism to ensure the expectations are set right. So we hope you enjoyed this short clip. And if you like the video, press the like button and we'll move on to the brown column in a couple of days or weeks.